So can we talk about productivity? It's the giant elephant in the room and we all want to be productive, right? We all want to get more stuff done in less time. So today I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what I do to be as productive as I possibly can with my side gig along with still working my full-time job. I want to let you see what my home screen looks like on my phone, all of the apps that I use on a daily basis that help me get done. The first category is time management and for this my number one app for time management is Google Calendar. If you've been living under a rock for the past I don't know how long and you're not using Google Calendar, you need to get with the program and you need to start using Google Calendar. The desktop version is phenomenal or if I'm on the go and need to know what my schedule is, need to know what my agenda is for the coming week or scheduling appointments, the mobile app is really easy to use. The other thing I will say about Google Calendar is you need to make sure if you're using it for work, right, your full-time job, make sure you're signed in to the correct account, right? <laughs> okay, so don't be scheduling things for your side gig in your work account and vice versa. That could be bad. And then you'll be like, oh, what? Elena said to use Google Calendar for side gig. I'm giving you the fair warning right now. Don't do it. I almost did it last week and it could have been bad. My second app under time management is Calendly. Now this is not technically an app, it is a desktop uh, platform that you can use, but I find this platform to be particularly useful when you're trying to find the time to schedule a meeting or an appointment and instead of going back and forth 30, 50 times over email or text message, you can send them a link to your calendar, say, hey, find a time on here that's good for you, and it automatically syncs to your Google Calendar, Outlook, or whatever uh, calendar client that you're using. Just for the basic use case of scheduling meetings, the free version is fine. You do not need to upgrade. Okay, so now we're heading into task management for productivity. And under this category, the third app that I recommend is Asana. And Asana is a project-based, ta uh, task management-based platform where you can simply drag and drop projects or tasks that you need to get done um, in a simple app format or also on the desktop. And the reason why I like this so much is because for me, being on my own, again, solo gig entrepreneur, I need a little reminder, I need some timelines to keep me accountable because if I'm trying to stay accountable to myself, instead of just scribbling some notes down on my, my journal, you know, this helps me get a little bit more concrete with my deadlines, helps me stick to my deadlines, and eventually, if and when I have a team helping me on my side gig, which would then be my full-time gig, fingers crossed, then at that point I would be able to add people to Asana, help me task manage. You can certainly go with the old school pen and paper of like writing to-do lists, but I think this is just a nicer upgraded version and it's free. I use the free version. I don't really find a need to upgrade to their premium version because I'm not working with a team. I only have a couple of projects that I'm really focused on right now. Asana free version is where it's at. My next app that I have on my favorites for task management is an app called Evernote. And at first I thought Evernote was a little bit clunky, like I didn't I didn't really get Evernote. I was like, yeah, I have Google Drive, I have Dropbox, I got cloud storage, why do I need Evernote? So if you use more than one mobile device and you use a laptop, right, so laptop, mobile device, you're using them constantly and you want everything to kind of like sync together and you don't necessarily have the full like uh, Mac product suite that everything is like syncing for you all the time, Evernote will be your BFF. And I finally kind of like light bulb went off in my head when I finally kind of got the use case for it because I was uploading a whole bunch of like screenshots in my phone that I needed. And I was like, oh man, I gotta like download it to the Google Drive and I gotta, you know, uh, rearrange it from there. 
what I could actually do is, from all those screenshots that I had in my camera roll, I can just send it right over to Evernote, and then Evernote will put it into a, a nice, uh, neat notebook that will go along with whatever topic that screenshot is, is meant for, and it'll categorize it for me, and it'll upload it, sync it directly to my laptop where I will actually need to use that screenshot. You're not going to go wrong with this app. The other thing about Evernote is that it is free, right? So I'm loving all of the free apps. There is an upgrade feature if you want to add more devices to your Evernote suite. Um, but I have two devices. I have a phone. I have a laptop. I really don't need a third device to be connected. Are you starting to see a trend here? I only get all the free, <laughs> the free apps. Yeah, it's I'm kind of cheap. <laughs> Now we're up to the last, the final, fifth app that I have on my phone for productivity, and it falls under the wellness and sleep category, which you might find a little bit weird, but if you are a side gig entrepreneur, you will not find this one to be weird at all, because in order for you to be productive, you need to get sleep, number one. Sleep is going to make you a productivity monster, and if you don't, you're going to be cranky, your whole day is going to be messed up, and it's going to be terrible. I chose Calm, which is, uh, again, I use the free version. Um, I wasn't ready to drop the $70 for the year for the upgrade to their whole extensive library, um, but the reason why I like this so much is even in the free version, you have 70 minutes of free content, right? So they have sleep stories, which I will get back to in a minute. I'm a huge fan of sleep stories. And they also have guided meditation series. Really huge fan of the sleep story. The free one that's on there, I think there's only one free one, but it actually works. So it's uh, Stephen Fry, it's called uh, gold fields or something. He's just talking about uh, Provence and the lavender fields and what his voice, okay, number one, is just so calming and soothing and it just, every time, it's like taking a sleeping pill. For tonight's sleep story, we travel to the south of France. I'm Stephen Fry. The seven days of calm and seven days to comfort, anxiety, those are really helpful as well in case I'm like really super wound up, I can't relax. I've been using the free version for like, I, I don't know, like six or seven months. They're definitely losing money on me. So there you have it. Those are my five, my top five best apps for productivity for side gig entrepreneurs. Let me know what you think of this. Give it a big old thumbs up or thumbs down if you hated it and thought it was useless. Let me know either way. Send me a comment down below as well. Uh, I'm using the free version of all of these apps and again, they would be losing money on me if I was a paid spokesperson. So again, this is not an ad. This is just from me to you to help your, your productivity on your side gig entrepreneurship journey. I've been posting videos every Tuesday and have been able to stick to that schedule. So uh, check out my new content every Tuesday. If we're not already friends on social media, check me out on Instagram. And uh, also the podcast is launching very soon. I think by the time this video is published, the podcast will be live. So I'll have a little bit more to say about that in, uh, in the next week or two. But until then, keep up that side hustle because mm, it looks good on you.